All right, guys, welcome back for episode number seven of our Flutter uh, app tutorial series, where we are creating an entire app using Firebase, Flutter, and Block. And today, we'll be focusing on the Block package. And I know you're dying for seeing some UI on the app, and don't worry, it's coming in the next episode. Today, we are linking all the logic that we've built inside our uh, package repository, our user repository. Remember, if I navigate to the code under packages, user repository, we've implemented all the logic for signing in, signing up, as well as to getting uh, user information from Firebase Firestore. And today we're going to link that with block. And then in the next episode, actually implement the UI. So for uh, the block package, First, what I want you to do is navigate on VS Code into the extension and search for block. So this uh, extension right here and you install it and that will allow you basically inside your, uh, your repository right here. If you double click, you'll see here block, new block or new qubit and we'll be using that to create actually the files uh, to actually just be faster. So once that's done, you can close that and navigate to your prospect.yaml file. And the first thing we want to do is actually go on the pub.dev website and find the Flutter block package. And we will be importing that to our prospect.yaml file. So under Firebase core, I will here write block and import Flutter block and save that. That will do a pub get. Once that done, we are ready to start building our new blocks. And basically we're going to navigate under the lib folder. And here, as you remember in the abstract video, we've created this block folder. And under that we'll create our first block, which is going to be the authentication block. So what you want to do is double click on here. And with the extension, we just added click on new block. And we're going to name this authentication and that's it, authentication. Press enter. And as you can see, it created all the file for our authentication block. I'm just going to rename it, rename the folder, sorry. Uh, that's block I want actually to, uh, to be authentication block. Well, it seems I can't right now. That's, we'll do that later. So first we're going to create all the blocks that we'll need. So authentication block, then create another block that we'll call my user. So basically this block is going to be good for creating all of the, all of the, all the calls for getting the user information. So get my user info and as well update user info. Uh, I don't know why I can't see them right here ah, because they're here. So I'm going to just move that out of the way and then rename all that. Sorry, it's a bit messy. Yeah, now it works. So now I want that authentication block with the folder that we just created. And I'm going to create just a new folder that's going to be called my user block. And I'm going to move all of those fo uh, little files under it. So basically you want to have authentication block with authentication block dot dart, authentication event dot dart and authentication state dot dart. And same for my user block right here. So now we need to create two more blocks. So under blocks, new block, and we're going to create sign in. Perfect. And the same for the others. I'm going to rename it sign in block so we know what it does. And last one, we're going to want to create the sign up block and rename the folder sign up. Okay, perfect. So that's done. You can close all of those folders. And we are going to start with the authentication block right there. So you can open event, block, and state. And so basically, how it works is you're going to have in your app some events. And an event is, for instance, a user that clicks on the button login, right? So we're going to have here an event that might be called login required. And this event is going to be processed inside our block where we'll call our backend. We'll call the stuff we did in the package that talks with Firebase. And then we'll emit a state to the app. And depending on the state, the app will react a different way. 
using block listener, block builder, block consumer. But we'll come to that in the UI phase. But basically, this is how it works. If you want a bit more information, you can go on the web and actually right here, you can learn more about the block library.dev. If you click on that, you'll be redirected to the block website. And if you scroll a little bit down, you'll have some more information. But basically, this is what it does. You have your UI, you have an event. It's the event is processed inside the block. But here we could add another node with our Firebase. So the block will talk to Firebase. Firebase will return something. The block will react to that and display a new state to the UI and then the UI will display what's needed. So basically, this is what we're going to create. So first, focusing on uh, authentication events. So you will be first have this sealed class authentication. So I prefer it to be abstract. That's just that's just for me right here. Abstract. Perfect. And so we want that to actually extend another package that's called equitable because we want to be able to compare different state. And you can see here we need to import that, but we don't have it yet. Well, don't worry. You can just navigate to pub.dev and import equitable. So up and I will import it under the block folder as well and press uh, control uh, S to save the file. And here, once pub.get has finished running, normally I'll be able to uh, import the package. Perfect. Yeah. So that's just what I did right now. And you'd see here, it's not imported inside this folder, inside this file, sorry. But that's normal because this file is just a part of authentication block.dart file. And if you navigate to it, well, you see right here that Equitable was imported. So once we have that created, we can now create our events, but first of all, we are going to need to implement a little stuff inside this abstract class. So first we want to have, well, an empty constructor. And then because we're extended equitable, we want as well to extend the props, uh, uh method right here. And so the first, uh, uh, the first, uh, events that we'll have is authentication user change. So. I'm going to create that right here. Authentication user change extended that extends our abstract class, which is our event class. We give a constructor to this and we have a, a parameter that is called user. And remember, we're dealing, we are dealing with Firebase authentication user. That's why it's called user right here and not my user. And so you would want to import some stuff, but we didn't import Firebase authentication under this prospect.yaml file. It's imported if you go to packages, user repository, and this prospect.yaml file, you'll see that it's here, but it, it's not because it's imported inside our uh, library, our user repository, that it's imported in our project. So I will just simply copy that and paste that inside our uh, main uh, prospect.yaml file. Save that, and once that's saved, I can navigate back to the event, authentication event, and import Firebase authentication. So that's basically it for our um, our uh, our first event. But we'll want to extend that. Add the uh, user right here. No, doesn't work. Okay, let's just leave it like this. And now we also want to create a logout event. Uh, if the logout was requested. So that's what we're going to do right here. So here then on the authentication state, we will do something completely different. You have two options basically when you're talking with states. You can either have a big class right here, authentication state, and create extended classes of this class to, to display the state. So basically you can have initial, but then you can have, for instance, authentication uh, let's say success and paste, for instance, the, the, the user right here. Okay. But we don't want to do that here. We want to create one class that's going to tell us everything. So you can go ahead and delete everything and we'll implement those type of class in other type of block. So first you want to create an enumeration, the authentication status. So basically the status of a user can be either authenticated, unauthenticated or a no. All right. Once that done, 
you want to create your class. So you want to create the class authentication state. All right, perfect. And now it extends it quotable and we have some methods to get over there. So you can see here, we're missing an override. That's just the props. That's fine. We can implement it as well. And instead of returning an error, we'll just return an empty list for now. So what do we want inside our class? So first we want our constructor. Okay. So we want our constructor to be exactly that. So we have our a constructor right here. And you see here, we'll have two parameters, two class parameters. We'll have uh, status and we'll have user. So let me just create them right now. I'll create them right here. Basically, it's exactly that. We have an authentication status, which is this. And we have a user, which is our Firebase authentication user. And we say that it might be nil because, well, you can be an authenticated. And in this case, you will be nil. So exactly that. So then we want to implement uh, uh, authentication state, uh, different variation of authentication state. So first here we'll have a node. So if the authentication, we have no information about the user, we just want to return the empty uh, constructor. If the user is currently authenticated, well, we want to implement another one. We'll want to implement, sorry, authentication state dot authenticated and authenticated. We want to take a user, a Firebase uh, authentication user and paste that into our constructor saying that the status is now authenticated and saying that the user is equal to the user that was given by the authenticated method, right? So that's pretty much it. And we want to create the same thing for an unauthenticated user. So basically the same under authenticated up for an authenticated user, authentication state the unauthenticated. And if it's the case, well, you're gonna return a status that is unauthenticated. And because our user can be nil right here, we don't have to paste this parameter right here neither. So once that done, we are pretty much done for uh, this class. Instead that we just need to feed the props with our uh, class parameters. But then when you've done that, you can save that. And that's pretty much it for the authentication state. And now we want to navigate to the authentication block and make actually the magic appears and the magic start here. So you'll see that you will have first an errors right here because well, we've deleted this class and uh, this class authentication initial. So we want to first replace that perhaps with what we created authentication state. Okay. And the first state that we have is unknown. We don't know. And you can make that constant. Perfect. Then we'll need some class parameters here for our authentication block. We'll need to access the user repository. So the user repository, it's the repository that we've created. And we'll want as well a stream subscription because remember, we are getting the user status with a stream. If I can show you easily, packages, user repository, lib, source, Firebase user repository. And here, this is how we get our user. It's a getter that returns a stream of user, of Firebase authentication user. And this is basically what we'll be listening to. So bear with me. Here at the very top, we'll add those two class parameters, user repository and stream st subscription. So user repository is gonna be like, well, what you're talking about, you're trying to import it, you can't import it. Well, that's very normal. I want you to navigate to your root perspect.yaml file. And you'll see here, you want to make a reference to the repository that you've just created. And to do so, you can just simply navigate under block and create a user repository and say that the path is packages and user repository. Very simple. Once you do that, you can save the perspect.yaml file to do a pub get. And once that's done, normally you navigate back to your authentication block and you can import the user repository very well. Now you have an error for the stream subscription. If you try to import it, you'll see different kinds of imports that you can do, but you want to import asynchronous. All right. So now we're pretty much good, but you're here. It says that this user subscription is never used and you have an error right here because you want to implement the parameters that we just did. Well, let's do just that. So, we want to say that the uh, my user repository 
is uh, required, but I'm not implementing directly this parameter. It's a little trick you can do in order to protect it a little bit more. But first of all, you want to do that. And then after the constructor, you want to set it to what it is actually. Hopla. So you want to say that, well, this is required, but in order to make it required, you have to add those curly braces right here. It's required to paste inside the authentication block constructor, a my user repository, a user repository object. And then you affect the, the, the my user repository object that was just based onto the one that we'll be using in our class. So that's pretty much done. And then you access uh, this uh, default state. And what you want to do here actually is you have this unknown stuff and then you can you go on to different kind of method right here. So first of all, we want to say and set our user subscription, okay? And say that this is equal to what? Is equal to our user repository that we created and you want to get to, to get to access the getter, the stream user, and you want to listen to that. So you want to listen to that, okay? And you'll see exactly what's happening here. And that's pretty much what we want. Okay, now we're gonna implement this listen method. So what we want to do, well, what we want to do is triggering a new event every time that this user getter is triggered because it's gonna be triggered every time that the status of our user is changed. So either he's signed in or he's signing out and this will change every time. So basically to add a new event inside the block, you just click, you just create add and we want to add the, um, the, the method, the event that we just created, authentication user change. And we just want to give him this event. We can we can rename. It's actually a user right here. Okay, so we can we can say auth user and paste that onto the parameter of our event. And as simple as that, we have what we want. So now you 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 can tell me. Well, okay, that's pretty good. We are uh, triggering this authentication user event every time that there is a change inside the status of the user from Firebase uh, authentication but we never implemented this authentication user change. So how come does he know? Well, he doesn't. So it's now the thing that we'll do right now. So here you would have by default those little methods. You can either implement directly there or create under method. I will implement directly right here. So I want to say that it's not an authentication event, but it's an authentication user change, which is as well an event, huh? right? but it's a specific event. And under that, I want to do a try catch. All the time, I will wrap everything inside try catch, okay? So perfect. So what we want to do here, we want to, to say, well, if the event dot user is different than null, well, we want to emit a new state, okay? And this state is going to be authentication state dot authenticated, okay? But this state authenticated takes a user. So we want to say that access the event and the user and say that it can't be null. And like, just like this, we're pretty good. Else, we want to say, well, we want to emit that the authentication state is an authenticated. Perfect. And we can even make that constant. I've wrapped this inside the try catch, but since we are using if else, we don't need them right now. So we can just throw them away. And that's pretty much it for our authentication user change method. That's pretty good. And the last thing that we want to do is we want to add this close, uh, close um, uh, function right here in our class uh, in order to actually close the block and close the listener, the stream, uh, cancel it every time that we are closing the block. So once that's done, we're pretty much it. That's pretty much it. And you remember it, we've created another event, authentication logout requested. You can delete that because we are actually gonna create this uh, event inside the sign-in block. Perfect, so our authentication block is now created and it's now done. So now we want to do the exact same thing 
or our my user block but it's going to be a little bit different and i'm going to be go a little bit faster over it because well you'll see it's easier so same you open event block and state so what do we want here well we want first to uh, replace what we have as this sealed class to something that looks like like something like this you want to import quotable perfect and now we want to uh, this is our main uh, my user event class we want to have a get my user we want to access firestore okay firestore not firebase authentication but firestore and say well i want to have the user information so the email the name the profile picture stuff that it's not stored anywhere inside firebase authentication so this event takes a user id we need to say to the firestore to the database which user we're looking for well we're adding this parameter in the constructor we're saying that this is a required parameter and we're just implementing the props which is just an extension from equitable and that's pretty much it for our event now let's go to the state so what kind of state we want to have depending on what's coming well it's a little different as well here because we really want to uh, create kind of the same stuff that we've created for the authentication block but we are going to make it a little a little different so you can remove all of this and add a new enumeration okay you add the new enumeration with my user status and then you create the class create my user state class okay same as before we are implementing a status and we are implementing a user as class parameters and this is basically going to look the exact same thing the exact same way that it did look for the authentication block except that we're not having a user we are having our user and we are importing then the fire the, the user repository we have created and so now same as the other one we want to add a new loading method right here if it's loading well we return an empty thing if it's success you've guessed it we are going to return success with the, my user and success and the user same structure as the authentication one and last method you have guessed it is failure where we return failure and the last thing we need to implement right here will be the props so the class is happy the state is done state is done just like that no more problem we just need now to implement user blocks so you'll see right here same as the authentication He's a bit pissed that we've deleted this class, but don't worry. We're going to tell you that it's a constant and we are going to access my user state and we're going to D say loading. Okay, perfect. Now we want some class parameters as well here. So we want our user repository. We want to be able to access it. Okay. So right here, we're going to say same as the other one that we want actually a my user repository a parameter when you create the class and we are going to affect this uh, my user repository to our user repository itself sorry the double dots they go here perfect well that's pretty much done okay that's pretty much good everything is well so now we want to implement our event it's not a my user event it's a get my user okay and so here let's go ahead and do a try catch so we can see everything that that's happening and we can log the exception if there is one and you want to import dart developer in order to do that and then if there is a problem we're gonna emit right here it's gonna be a constant my user state failure okay so you would might you might think well here we're gonna we're gonna do the logic but you might think well i want to to first emit a loading right here before doing anything i i emit a login i i emit a loading then i do my stuff and if it's good i emit success and if it's not i emit failure here that's what we're gonna do here success and here a success need uh, actually a, a, a user okay my user but here you don't need to emit this login this loading uh, state because it's by default what's emitting right here so you can just go ahead and get rid of that now what you want to do well you want to access a new user right a user from our from our um, a database so that's basically what we'll do here so you'll see my user that we've created is equal to await so because it's a, a synchronous method we need to say right here accessing our user repository 
and the method get my user that we're giving him the event uh, ID, so the uh, the user ID that we're looking for. And then this is not going to be constant, but we want to give him my user right here. And just like that, our my user block is done as well. Well, we're moving along quite good. Let's go ahead and continue. So my user authentication block, my user block is done. Let's create the two last block that we have to create. So basically the sign in block, same open event block and state. And we're going to move along quite fast with this one. Okay. So let's go ahead and create our uh, sign in event. So you have here up sign in events. I'm just going to remove that up abstract class sign in event extend portable. Let me just import that one. And we have this empty class. So what type of events do we have? Well, we're going to have sign in required or sign up required. Very straightforward. You can also add a reset password if you feel like you need it, but in this demo project, will not. So you have two parameters for assigning required an email and a password because this is the only method that we actually implemented. You might want to add a phone number right here if you implemented this kind of authentication method. So that's pretty much what we'll have. And then we'll have a sign out required event just like this. Now we want to create our state. And this is going to be a little different. We're going to keep this kind of structure right here, because remember, we've created different types of structure uh, for, for the two previous blocks, and we just want to create a more kind of straightforward one. So let's go ahead and do just that. So let me just tweak a little bit this uh, sign in state. And now we are going to create different type of classes. So we are going to create this first class, which is going to be sign in initial. So if, if it's just like the beginning, we want to be able to, 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 to return just that. And then we'll want to create three classes, sign in success, sign in failure, or sign in in process. And basically we are going to, this is all states and we'll be able to listen to those states inside our app. So sign in success, sign in failure and sign in process here for sign in failure. I'm adding a message, uh, which is a string as a class parameter because Firebase authentication might give us specific reason for what your user couldn't sign up maybe or, or sign in it's because the email is already taken or the password is wrong. So we can display that to the user. And then we, I, I think we're pretty much done. We're pretty much done with that. So once that done, we want to go to our block and right here, we are going to implement actually our method. But before that, as the other one, we need to access our user repository. So that's exactly what we'll do right here as a class parameter, import user repository. And here we are going to do the exact same thing that we've did with the other one as for the constructor. So basically up affecting it. And then that's pretty much done. Perfect. We don't need to replace that because remember we've done a, 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 the, the good, let's say there is two ways to create your architecture for the state, but we've done this one. So no need to replace that. And now we want to implement our sign in required event. Perfect. So here try catch. Okay. Same method. If there is a catch, we can log the errors and print it to string. Okay. So why is it not, uh, because I've imported math instead of imported developer right here. And then we'll want to emit, well, sign in failure, which is the state for a failure. If there is an exception, well, we catch it. And then we emit the good state before the try, we want to emit that the sign in in process. Okay. So we can, for instance, display a circular progress indicator instead of displaying the button to the user. Okay. And inside our try catch, what we want to do? Well, we want to await. So if we want to await something, let's make the method asynchronous. We want to await what our user repository. Okay. Dot remember the method that we've created sign in and we need an email. Well, it's inside the event. And we need a password. Well, it's inside the event as well. Perfect. And if all goes good, we just want to emit 
sign in success. Perfect. Our sign in block is done. So now on to the final one. The well no, sorry, sign in required. I didn't do the sign out, but that's pretty straightforward. You just want to add a new uh, on right here, sign up required, and just access our logout. Perfect. So that's done. Sign in block is done. Last up, sign up. So let's go ahead and clear those files. Event, block, and state. Okay. So let's start with the event then. We want to have, well, sign up required. Same logic, really, it's all the time the same. So let's go ahead and create just that. So first, let me remodel a little bit this sign up event right here. Extend the quotable, import it. Perfect. So our first event and our only event for this block is going to be sign up required. That's going to take a user, okay? And that's going to take a password as well. So we want to import our user repository as well. And that's pretty much it for the event. So let's move on to the state now. Same stuff as the sign in state. We are going to have a very simple and straightforward um, a class right here. Sign of state, extended quotable. So the first state that we could have is initial. Okay, perfect. So class sign up initial extend sign up state. And then we have three classes that extend sign up state, sign up success, sign up failure, and sign up process. Perfect. That's the only thing that we need. And we don't need any class parameters for those things because we are getting our data from other blocks. So now let's go inside our sign up block and as the same as for the other block, we want to be able to access our user repository. We want to be able to add that inside the constructor. It's really pretty much the same all the time. So let's go ahead and create just that. Tac, that's done. Now sign up initial, that's fair. And now we want to implement our not sign up event, which is the abstract class, but our sign up required, which is the actual event itself. And so here, again, try catch, follow the same logic. Before going inside the try, we want to emit a sign up process. If something goes wrong and it's catched by our try catch, we want to emit sign in failure. And if everything goes right inside our try catch, we want to emit sign, in, sign up process. And what do we actually want to do inside here? Well, we want to access the method that we've created inside our user repository. So because it's a future, it's asynchronous. Sorry, wrong place. It was here. So we want to await our user repository that sign up method that takes a user, a my user, our user, and a password. So we are accessing that by uh, accessing the event parameter, the user parameter, as well as the password. And then we want as well to set the data inside our Firestore database, because right here, we're just utilizing Firebase authentication method, but we are not saving the data of the user. So that's what we want to do right here. We want to await user repository and set user data, use the method that we've created and paste in the user that we have after signing up. Perfect. Here, you'll see that it's returning my user sign up. Why is that? Let's navigate to it so you can understand it a bit better. So you want to navigate to packages, user repository, lib, source, Firebase user repository. Sign up is right here. So we are using first this method, okay? Firebase authentication, create user with email and password. And you'll see that it's returning a future, but most and foremost, a user credential, okay? That's what we're returning, we're giving right here. Then this user credential has an ID and this ID is the representation of the user. It's a unique representation of the user that is actually the document ID. Okay. And we want to store that inside our class. So then we are setting my user and we are copying with the ID that was just created when we sign up and we are returning this modified user. Otherwise, we would just return a void, right? We don't need anything right here because it's going to be handled by the user right here, the stream that we have, the fact that it's signed up. But that's because we want to do that, that we need to return the user. And once you've done that, you're pretty much set 
with all the different blocks. Everything is implemented. So we have our authentication block that's implemented. We have our user block that's implemented as well as the sign-in block, as well as the sign-up block. So next episode, we'll be actually be creating the authentication screen. So I'll see you guys then. Bye-bye.